all, my name is Mass Bartenkopf from Kaiser Power Electronics and today we are talking about a small project by a user on highvoltageforum.net. It is Torben from tmaxelectronics.de. Check out a link to his website and YouTube channel in the description. And the project we are talking about today is his USB MIDI interrupter. And while that is a very small, nice package, Let's just take a quick run back of some of the other MIDI interrupters that I have. I have the one Tesla MIDI interrupter, a bit simple, uh, but small and portable. Then I have a Philips Slavinsky, uh, quite big, two channels, also pretty nice. And I have a Lone Ocean's uh, dual MIDI interrupter as well. So these are of course some nice good standalone units that uses battery power and just a regular MIDI interface. But to skip this uh, conversion internally, he did all this in software and we just have a small USB to optical output interface to use on the computer along with some PC software. So let's check that out. It is a super small product, so I will just have to try to point out some of the key features on it. Let's first just take the banana for scale. As we can see, it is a, the size of a regular USB stick. It is based around a PIC32 MX270 microcontroller, the F256B, runs at presumably 50 megahertz from the crystal sitting here at the back. It has a single GH12E 3.3 volt regulator, and we have a output transistor for the optical output transmitter sitting over here. Now this can both be a HFBR or a um, normal one millimeter plastic fiber E96E transmitter. It has some development uh, interfaces. I think this is external power supply and then it has a five pin header for programming of the PIC. Other than that, it has some status LEDs. We can see here it is the version 1.1. Has a little piece of art. We have a rare paper here that says, wow, such melody. And this actually do not say real, it is REQ1, so regulator 1. So let's take a look at the documentation. Let us check out the GitHub page where he stores all his projects. As we can see here, he has a Nixie clock, some MIDI stick PCB files, we have the firmware, and he also has some extensions to the Nets for sure UD3 development kit that you can also find on highvoltageforum.net. But let's check out the MIDI stick firmware. So here we have a fully open source driver and it also comes with a small readme here. Just a, a bit about what is it, what features does it have and how far is it. And as we can see he has released version 1.0 and 0.1 which has support for two different optical outputs. Now uh, to see the releases we'll have to go to the release page and here we can actually download the stick configurator point jar so we need to install a, a java runtime environment in order to run this program it also has a wiki part here where it actually has all the points about how to change the settings how to set up your coil configuration presets it has how a whole getting started that explains the user interface of the PC software. Suggests uh, the use of MIDI programs and how to understand the MIDI protocol. And it has a very clever use of a two pin AUX connector that we saw in the PCB hardware um, review. And this actually has three uses that you can use it as an audio output, as an emergency stop input, or as a UART interface to recover a bricked device. And it is quite unusual that you see somebody include a interface to actually recover bricked devices. So I guess he has some experience in electronics not behaving as it should. Also has some explanation of the duty limiter algorithm. And then again, back to the whole how to repair stuff and short circuit it with a scissor and also how to update the firmware. So I have downloaded the MIDI interrupter configuration utility here. So let's just try to insert the MIDI stick here into my USB port. 
And let's see, it says there is a software update available for at least one of your devices. It's recommended to perform the update now. Start the firmware update utility. Yes. And get latest from GitHub. I was running version 91C and this is 93. Options, load from file, go. And it's written, I would say for a small USB uh, project like this, this is uh, very nice. Reboot now, yes. Update complete. Guess we can just close this window now. Okay, it's connected to the MIDI stick. Let's see, oh, this is very nice. You can actually configure it to the three onboard LEDs. This is the AX output or uh, normally closed emergency stop. And you can select between power data out on, duty limiter or ADSR preview on the three LEDs. Some stereo position, stereo width and stereo slope. Let's see, coil configurations, MIDI programs. A few clicks later and we can actually find out how to configure this program. You just have to right click on your coil configs to add a new coil and we also want to add a new voice for the MIDI program. So here we can see we can set up the attack, decay, sustain, release, node offset, bend range and actually also have a live preview so you can actually just yeah, stream it right out of the USB stick. Now um, for the coil config, we can see that we can set some uh, minimum on time, maximum duty cycle, hold off, and maximum on time per node. So this is all parameters to protect your Tesla coil. And in order to actually have more um, yeah, different uh, names, let's just say we call this coil something and we can add a new coil. So you can actually have multiply setups depending on your Tesla coil. Some small coils cannot take long on times, bigger coils can take long on times. And once we have all this set up with the settings we want, we can so save the changes to the device and we can now choose a active config. Now if we have more sticks connected, and I have mine here on a USB cable, I can actually say identify and we can see it starts to blink the LED on your connected USB stick here so another nice feature. We can turn that off again. So let me just get a optical output on this and let's test it on a Tesla coil. So this is the terrible test setup. The MIDI USB stick, Variac, cables, camera, Tesla coil. The MIDI configuration tool is now set up. I have uh, adjusted, no, I have not adjusted the settings here, but let's just uh, ignore that. I have activated my little coil. I have used the virtual MIDI piano keyboard, so let's just try to give it a note. That works. That's very cool. Let's, um, Let's drop the keyboard. Just toss a random uh, MIDI file at it. And let's just let it rip. <laughs> That's fantastic. That plays very, very well. And I can say that there are some minor problems with it. Um, I had to reload the firmware at uh, one point where it just got stuck. I would just get a red LED blinking when I sent MIDI uh, commands to it, but no uh, blue LED for output. Not quite sure what went wrong. I did not go for the uh, serial uh, firmware update uh, of the bootloader as I could just yeah, re-upload the uh, firmware to it from GitHub and that fixed the stick again. It could also be some settings that I really uh, got adjusted in some weird way, but actually I did only um, 
put in the uh, MIDI voice and that worked previously. So not quite sure. It was after a, a power cut from when I plugged in my Variac and my computer lost power and after that it kind of acted up weird. So that could have been the case. Let's try to play a MIDI and then play along with the voices in the live mode of the configuration tool here. So we will enable sustain and live preview. Then we'll save the changes here. We are 90% sustain. So let's just try to play a MIDI file here. Here, how we can note offset or how much we want to bend. Thank you for tuning in on this demo of the USB MIDI stick made by TMAX Electronics. So check out his project in the links below to the highvoltageforum.net forum posts and thread about it. And also check out his Viggy page on the GitHub repository. And also check out his website. He really deserves some credit for making a small lightweight product completely open source and with some nice features. So until next time. See ya.